Welcome to CBR TV. I'm Jonah Wild. We have a very special guest in our studios today in Los Angeles, Miss Juliet Landau. Of course, Buffy and Angel fans know her better as Drusilla. Thanks for coming out here. Thank you. But of course, now today, people are going to know you a little bit better as a comic creator because you have a two part story that you've co written with Brian Lynch in the Angel Comics for IDW. How did this happen? Basically, uh, Chris Ryle, the editor, and Brian uh, approached me and asked me if I would be interested in doing it, and I said absolutely, and uh, that was the sort You're of the inception. Races. Yeah. Why comics? Uh, do you have a history of comics on a personal level in the past? Or? You know, um, I don't have that, but um, basically I was really excited because the unique situation of Buffy and Angel being continued in comic book form after the series ended um, is a great opportunity to get to delve back into the character and tell some of her stories. Right. So now, where did this story come from? I mean, they approached you and they said, hey, we want you to work on this. And did, did you have an idea right then, or was there an idea festering in your mind before that? No, it, it did happen right then. I was actually editing. I co-directed a music video for the band Godhead, and I was in the editing room and literally got off the phone, and immediately it sort of flooded me, this idea. And uh, I wrote it into script form and okay. sent it to Brian and Chris, and they loved it and said, let's go with this story. And, that. So now, did you have much communication with Brian after you handed off your script and say, "Hey, you know, you should do it this way. Don't, 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 don't miss out on this kind of thing." <laughs> um, it wasn't. It wasn't like that. But we did work in tandem. Um, basically, I gave uh, uh, after the script. Brian wrote uh, issue one, a synopsis for issue one, and sent it to me. I reworked it and sent it back to him. We did the same with. Uh, with issue two, and then we sort of did that with pages back and forth, and, and really worked until we had the whole whole thing. But you you actually contributed to this comic more than just uh, writing. You you also designed a bunch of covers, didn't you? Yeah. What, why 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 go so far with this comic? Um, well, first of all, whenever I work on anything, I get really excited about it and I give my 145 million percent <laughs> <laughs> sort of my nature sure. and um, and I really got excited about the the art component so I worked um, closely with Franco on all the internal art and I sent him I'd say something like 1200 reference images I pulled all this stuff a lot of them Kubrick I really wanted this sort of that sort of feel and would say for this panel for this you know this this is what I have in mind. Um, and then I brought Sam Sheeran. Uh, Mr. Sam did uh, two additional covers, and an artist named Mark McKaylee, who did some additional bonus art that is inside um, okay. issue two. Okay. Would you be interested in writing more comics at this point? I would. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. Do you I, think you'd ever step out completely on your own and say, Brian, you go away. You know, I'm going to handle this one. Well, I don't think I'd say go away, but I, but, <laughs> but I, might, I might do it on I might venture on my own, because I really did have a blast doing it. It was fun. Would you want to stay within the Buffy Angel universes, or maybe do something? Like I'm that? interested in both, actually. I'm interested. Yeah. I, I definitely have ideas about Drusilla, having inhabited the character for such a long period of time. Right. Uh, it's, it was interesting once they asked me; it sort of came back alive inside me. But um, I have some other ideas too that might might find their way there. You know, and, and some of your other your other co-stars have, have written comics too. I think James Marsters wrote mm -hmm. the comic, is that right? Yeah, and then uh, Emma Am Caulfield. And Amber Benson, I know. Amber wrote, Amber's yep. done some comics. Mm -hmm. And Emma Caulfield just announced uh, this past weekend that uh, uh, she's got a web comic that she's doing now. Oh, fantastic. It's got a very strange name. What is it? Uh, you know? Contra Pussy, I think is what it was called. Okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and it's, it's about these cats, and it's it's really bizarre, but it looks pretty cool. So uh huh. Far. Well, maybe so, she'll so, get a huge audience from that title. <laughs> <laughs> but what is it about like the Buffy crew that's like that's really embraced comics so much? Why do you think that is? Is it just that you guys were all kind of had this kind of geeky side to you? Uh, maybe, maybe that's it. Yeah. We were, yeah, just a bunch of geeky nerds, and when we like it, no, I don't know. It's 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 a really incredible way to tell a story. Yeah. So now, outside of comics, you actually have quite a bit of comic cred yourself as well. Uh, you provided voices for Justice League Unlimited. Uh, you've got you were the voice of Tala, I believe that was. Yes, that right? I did actually a, a character named Plastique on there as well, okay. and uh, Ramakushna and a character named Bernadette, and then Tala, which was one of my favorite because she was a, a Russian mystical sorceress that was okay. fun. And then you did, you were you were the the voice of Labella on Green Lantern First Flight. Yes. Um, Talk about voice acting versus regular acting. It's, it's, I'll, I'll share a little secret with you. I, I had an actor once tell me, he says, I love voice acting because it's the easiest check I can get. But I've had other actors tell me it's just as hard work. And in some ways harder because you're alone. 
when you're doing it? Sometimes. Um, what's interesting with Justice League and also with the Green Lantern, it depends sort of on the nature of what it is. Sometimes you're in a booth by yourself, and sometimes you are working with a group of actors, and okay. you're playing off each other. You're sitting in a semicircle, and you actually do get to work off of each other, which makes it much easier and, uh, and fun. I love it. Yeah? Yeah, I really love it. It really is creative and fun, and, and when you get to work with other actors, you it literally is sort of like playing tennis and bouncing off each other. Right, right. Just a couple weeks ago, you were down at Comic-Con promoting all of the stuff between Angel and Green Lantern First Flight. Any weird Comic-Con experiences you can share? No, I loved it. I had a great time. It was my first time really? there. Really? Yeah. It wasn't overwhelming? It was a little out, overwhelming and just in terms of it's so vast. Right. And everyone says that before you go, and right. then you still sort of are like, wow, it is really huge. Yeah. Yeah, but it was amazing. It was very busy I was because of promoting both projects, but it was really productive and really fun, and everybody that came up was really nice. No so. odd requests from fans no, or anything? Not such odd requests, no. Shame. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it, it is an overwhelming experience. I've been going for, I think, 18, 17, 18 oh, years wow. now, and I've seen it grow. I don't go into the show anymore. Really? It's just, it's too much. Yeah. Now, outside of comics, you, you're working on a number of things right now. Uh, you've, you've, you've just wrapped on a movie called Monster Mutt. You've got a movie that I think you're basically handling everything on with It's Raining Cats and Cats, right? Yes, that's right. Um, tell us a little bit about Monster Mutt. What is that? Monster Mutt is an adorable kids movie, yeah. and it's really fun. It's produced and created by Drac Studios, okay. which is four-time Oscar-winning Greg Canham studio. They just uh, won for Benjamin Buttons. They did Hannibal, Mrs. Doubtfire, Dracula, right. and it's their baby. And I play the the slinky blonde Russian baddie. So it's really fun, really fun. Lots of cat suits and slinking cool. around, stalking, and uh, weapons, things of that nature. Cool. So that was really fun. And It's Raining Cats and Cats is a project that I wrote. Right. And I am going to play seven different characters in it. And Drac Studios is actually going to do all the makeup, so I'm really excited wow. about that as well. Wow. That's... And I've been um, raising money um, the way Amber Benson did on a website by selling autographed merchandise, and it's been really amazing. Really? The fans have been incredible. Do you think that that's a viable alternative for these homegrown productions these days? It is. Yeah? It is. It's really incredible because people support your work and want to help you do more, and it's it's been amazing. Wow. I, I, it's, just, it's just amazing to me that even in an economy like this, you can actually raise enough money to make a small film, on, yep. you know, a small budget, obviously, right. but it's pretty amazing that the it, fans will come out. Like yeah, that. it really is. That's got to really be really incredible. rewarding as an actress, as a director, and stuff like that to see that kind of feedback. It is. And support. It is really amazing. Now, here you are, you're acting, you're directing, you're writing, you're. you're you're overachieving, in my opinion. <laughs> no, but but seriously, is there Thank one <laughs> is there one that you feel most comfortable with? Um, you know, I, I was a dancer originally. I was a professional right. ballerina. Um, I, I've been acting for a long time and supporting myself with for an act as an actress for about fourteen years, and so I love it. I really am loving the new direction that I'm going in as well. It, all of it's a creative expression, and I'm enjoying right. all of it in different ways. Is there one you'd like to focus on? No, I want to do it all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I really, I do like doing doing it all. What about this 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 Gary Oldman documentary you you made? Uh, what's the name of that again? It's called Take Flight. That I, I honestly did not know about that before this week, and as I'm doing research, it's like wow, a documentary on Gary Oldman. Yeah. Uh, was that a huge challenge or just a total uh, joy? It was a joy, him. actually. It was a joy. What happened was Gary directed a music video that he shot entirely on Nokia cell phones. Yes, yeah, okay. Okay, and then he asked me to, to make the making of, and what started solely as a behind the scenes making of bloomed into this documentary film that's um, really about his creative process. Would you want to do more documentaries in the future? I would be interested, although I'm really interested in doing a narrative because it was interesting. I had. Uh, 50 hours of footage that I condensed down into a 25-minute movie, wow. and that was a lot of work. And I watched all 50 hours three times through, and then I sat side by side with my editor because I had a really specific vision of what I wanted to do. But it was really, it's sort of like carving away things. And when you're shooting a narrative, you, you go, you know specifically sort of what the clear through line is, okay. although I had, had one in, in this as well. But. Okay, okay. As we wrap up here, mm -hmm. uh, the first a issue of Angel that you co-wrote with Brian is already out. Yeah, it just came out. Uh, this video is going to air on the day that the second issue oh, comes awesome. out. Oh, awesome. That's what we'll do. Uh, what can you tell us about the second issue? Uh, 
what is what's going on? I there? can't say too much. What I can say is that the first issue is sort of the setup, and then a lot happens in the second issue. Okay. Yeah. Did you find it hard to kind of condense it down in any way, or was twenty two pages more than enough for you? You know. It was interesting. There were points of, of figuring stuff out, and I definitely sort of ruminated and figured stuff out, tried, tried to. But there was something sort of that just flowed with it as well. So there was a, an ease with it, telling the story that surprised me. All right. Well, good luck. Uh, we need more comics from you, Juliet. <laughs> Thank you. Anytime. Thank you very much Thank for coming out. Thank you so out. much. She's Juliet Landau, and I'm Jonah Weiland, and this is CBR-TV.